So today we're going to show you how to use your iPad uh, connected Ethernet to one of the iConnectivity interfaces. Today we're going to use the Play Audio 12 and we're going to use the iPad just as a control surface. But you can use this for synths, sending information from your iPad, um, just media information. We're not going to do any audio through this Ethernet connection from the iPad over to a computer. And so let's kind of look through that. So I'm using a USB-C, an iPad Pro with USB-C hub connected. The USB-C hub has an option for an ethernet connection. If you're running a lightning connected devices, they also sell the lightning to ethernet adapter. Make sure you get a good one because I've seen some kind of knockoff brands not work so well. So on the iPad, the first thing we want to do is look at the name on here. So basically to create the connection, uh, over the ethernet connection here, we need to connect the Bonjour name from the iPad over to the Play Audio 12. So I'm gonna show you more about how to make that happen here. So what we wanna do, the first thing we wanna do is go to settings on our iPad. We're gonna go to general and then about. And then the very top thing you're gonna see is name. So in the name section here, what you want to do is you want to have a name that is under 15 characters and doesn't have any special characters. So by default, normally the iPad has, uh, like you put in just your name. So it'll say John's iPad if your name, if you put in your name, John. So there's will be apostrophe S uh, after the name. So just make sure you get rid of that apostrophe because that will not work for the naming scheme for a bonjour name. Once you do that, you're gonna type this in right here where I've shown you on the iPad. And then you can just go back. And what you wanna do is power cycle your device and wait for it to come back up. Now, after you power cycle your device, I find that I often have reconnect the uh, hub or adapter, whatever I'm connecting, and so that it shows up. Now I've turned off Wi-Fi on my device so that um, you don't see anything. So you can see my Wi-Fi is off. And you can see that it Ethernet connection is connected. So if you're not seeing Ethernet show up here under the Wi-Fi, then either the adapter's not working or there's a bad connection. There's something wrong where the Ethernet's not actually going through to here. So make sure that you're seeing Ethernet show up in your settings or you're gonna be having problems right off the bat. We're gonna use Lemur today as the control surface software. I set this up in a previous video with the Play Audio 12 and Mio XM where we're connecting it USB. Uh, for this one, we're connecting it Ethernet, so it's a little bit different of a setup. And you can do this still, I've been doing it with the Play Audio 12, but you can do this with a Mio XM if you so choose. So let's get the settings set up for this. So I just have a simple play and stop button. Um, they're going to MIDI target zero. You can look at some Lemur videos to see how that works out, or my last video, just to get these buttons going. So we're gonna click the gear in the top right corner here. We're gonna go to more settings and our MIDI target here, so you can add targets here. It's just gonna be network session one. So any RTP MIDI ports that are connected are all gonna go through network session one. Uh, IELTS doesn't have an elaborate network setup, so everything goes through network session one. So that's all we need to do in there. We're just gonna hit done. So that part is set up on the iPad. So now let's jump over to the computer. And on the computer here, we are in Oracle for X series. I'm on a Windows 10 computer, but the same setup is exactly right for a Mac as well. So we're just gonna go to our Play 12, which connected USB, um, because this is, would normally be like a, a playback type computer or something with a DAW where you're connecting USB to your Play 12. So let's go to RTP slash network MIDI, and let's make the connection from our Play 12 to our ethernet connection on our iPad. So what we wanna do in here is we can take any of these four ports. I'm gonna take the first one for this example, but you can take any of them. And each port is gonna give you a 16 MIDI channels to run information in and out on. So let's go to and switch the first one to initiator. And then you can see it says IP or name. Uh, it's selected name by default. So this is gonna be the bonjour name that you wanna type in here. So you need to get this exactly right if there's capital letters. So mine was I, capital P-A-D, capital T-E-S-T. -T. Then we're gonna click save and we should make a connection between the iPad and the Play Audio 12. And you can see iPad test shows up right here. We've made a connection. Now the only thing we need to do is to get 
from our computer to get to that RTP session, which is very simple for the Play ID12. If you go to MIDI routing, you'll notice that under the USB or device port to computer slash DAW, you'll see that there is actually already one called RTP1, which goes to the iPad. So you can actually rename this to iPad if you so choose. Um, but we just know that RTP1, which was the one that we connected up out here, the first one, is going to the iPad. And so this is already set up. You don't have to do anything with it. So now this should work. If I go over and test this, I'm gonna open up Midiox and we can run a test on this guy. Let's go into, so Midiox, I just went to uh, options, MIDI devices, and we're gonna select the input, which is gonna be RTP one. There it is. So we've added RTP one as the M. And then I have an input monitor, which you can click up here for the input monitor. And we should now, when I touch the play button, you can see I'm getting the play and here's the stop. You can see the different uh, CCs. And we can also then map it over in our DAW. So whatever DAW that you have, you can set this up and I'm gonna try and open up Ableton Live. And so what we'd want to do in here is we go control comma or command comma on a Mac. We're going to enable RTP one for track and remote. Remote is how we're navigating through and our transport display, which is the main thing that we're doing is transport. So we definitely want to get that input and you can put it on output if you're trying to send out information back to that device. But I just want to map some buttons in here. So let's go to MIDI. We're going to click on the play button, touch the play button on the iPad, click the stop button and touch the one on the iPad and that's it. So everything is now mapped. So if I'm in arrangement view here, I can hit play and it plays, hit stop and it stops. And that's all we need to do. So if you have any questions or any concerns about that, just let us know, contact us at support, uh, drop a comment below.